Hey guys, Maury at 316 Automotive. Good morning. What are we doing today? We're looking at a Saab 9.3 here, uh, mine. And I got curious about the positive crankcase ventilation system. Uh, with uh, I was poking around on the web and I was seeing that uh, these cars have an issue with the PCV system. And so I wanted to see if mine had the same issue. So there's an easy test to determine that. What you do is you start up the car, you take off the, um, the oil fill cap here, and you throw a rubber glove over that oil fill cap, and if the glove becomes inflated like that, then you've got a problem with your PCV. If the glove lays down and stays laid down, well then you're okay. So we're going to do a little test. All right, as you can see, that glove is standing straight up and it stood up pretty quickly. So that means there's a problem with the PCV. So, what I'm going to do now Pull that off of there. Well, I've already done the test. I'm just showing you guys. What I did is I went on went on the interweb. I got a kit that I got it on eBay, and I suspect it came from e Euro Parts, but I don't know that for sure. There's a lot of places. Uh, the kit is uh, professional parts. Uh, let's see. 213-41200. That's the kit that the Technical Service Bulletin recommends. And then this is a bigger kit, so it's got 233-49973, crankcase vent hose. And it's got 233-40463, another vent hose. This little vent hose has a one-way check valve. And then it's got the 555-60445 uh, curly Q hose, as you can see right there. And the technical service bulletin, also from E-Euro Parts, TSB 210-2418, this is edition 4, and it tells you about the background, how the, uh, the crankcase ventilation uh, could be problematic on these cars, it gives you the background. You can search on the interweb too, and it gives you all the steps necessary to change things out and make it uh, make it good again. So that's what we're going to do. First step, it says, is remove the oil filler tube. There it is. Okay. I'll show you a difference between the old and the new. The old one right here, got the mounting hole, that's where it goes in to the engine, and it's pretty simple. The new one, same sort of thing, got the mounting hole, that's where it goes into the engine. It's got this, this takeoff coming from it that you plug a pipe into, that's going to be now part of the the PCV system and so it comes out inside there and I talked about one of the reasons that you want a good operating PCV system because you don't want to be having um, combustion gases in the crankcase if you can avoid that and so that would tend to make um, make the gaskets weep and you get oil leaks under the car, which this ha this car has some weeping gaskets, and also what you want to do is you want to have a good PCV system because with those um, combustion gases, the, the air intake and then the fuel get mixed together and they get through with the combustion process, well, some of the gases slide by the rings, the piston rings, and they go into the crankcase. Well, 
that's not good because you get combustion gases mixing with oil. What does that produce? That produces sludge. Nobody wants sludge in their engine. And putting a little bit of oil on the rubber ring right here. Dexos again. Okay, that's done. Then it says remove this hose right there, which goes from the camshaft cover down to the vapor recovery box. Hose is in good shape, but I'm still going to replace it because it's part of the kit. Next thing says remove the nipple that comes out. So the nipple's got that tab on the top side there that just slips right in here. So take that out and we've got a new one here. There's a new one with a new gasket, so I'm going to do that as well. This nipple is also connected to a check valve, which we're going to replace. The inline check valve is part of this mod as well. Incidentally, this is called a technical service bulletin in the United States. In Europe, it's a recall. And so GM had to pay for it over there, but we as the customers have to pay for it over here. You know, from what I understand on the interweb, uh, if it's safety related, then it's a recall here in the US. If it's not safety related, then you're on your own. So, unless there's lawsuits or something. But in Europe, they do it a little bit different. Oh well. Okay, I gotta show you this. The first hose here that I took off, uh, this end went to the went to the, um, the camshaft cover, valve cover if you will, um, and the other end of it, the curved end, you can see it went, this hose right here is the hose that's closer to the center line of the car. The uh, hose that goes to the, what they're calling the valve cover is, um, camshaft cover rather, is is that way it's you can see I'm poking my finger in it and that's to the ventilation box so there we go all right that burger came off now you see the oil trap down there those two, those two nipples that I just pulled the hoses off of, that has to come out too. I'm gonna have to do that from below the car. See those two nipples way up there? That's the oil box or oil trap. There is the, the bottom hose to the PCV. I'm gonna have to take off the, uh, the alternator cable right there in order to get this the box out but that's okay they tell me i need to do that i think it's 13 millimeter here's the oil filler dipstick tube that's going to remain in place but this is going to come out i'm just going to move it out of the way okay i got done underneath taking off those hoses i did have to take off the support for the uh the manifold it goes down to the bottom near the oil pan you got to take that off as well and then you can get out the um, catch can which you got to take out from above because it's a bear to get out but there it is now this gets thrown away and a new one gets installed so we're in the home well we're midway all right I'll keep you up to date Actually, here's the new one. New and fresh. All right, there's the new catch can installed. Get my hand up in here. This is it. Remove that lead right there. It's got uh, oil teat right there and two more teats up top. 
and two 13 millimeter bolts that hold it on. And it's a bit of a of a thing to get it get it there. It's got to come from upstairs. It's got to come down here. You got to be holding your mouth right, and you can wiggle it into place. And uh, but it goes in. So now we're going to start putting things back together. There's that the support uh, tube for the the intake manifold. I told you that. Uh, need to come out that's easy another more 13 millimeters and away you go so now I gotta I gotta reinstall the lead here onto the alternator and uh, then do that that down thing and then uh, the down support and then the two tubes or the two tubes up top and the one tube down the bottom the one tube on the bottom goes from here down to right there and that's going into the oil pan so make sure you do that and tighten them up and then go back up top okay now I want to show you uh, the little one-way check valve here that goes to uh, the throttle body and the TSB actually there's the new one right there and it comes out right here and it plugs in right there and it plugs into the throttle body right below these coolant tubes here that you have to take off there's the two coolant tubes and here's a tube going to something I don't know where that is anyway I'm gonna reconnect them but that tube right down right down there that's the new one and the technical service bulletin says make sure that the check valve arrows are pointing towards the um, the throttle body right here so strangely enough I took off the old one and the old one was pointing the opposite direction very strange so uh, I'm adhering to the uh, technical service bulletin and doing it the way they say. Now I'm going to reassemble everything up top here. I still got more to go. All right, now you got to install this pipe that comes from follow it around. Turbocharger is just below there. They call it the turbocharger hose. And anyway, you take the old hose off, it connects right there. And you put the one with the T connection on it. And it's got a one-way valve. You can see the arrows, and they go right to the filler neck, right to the uh, the attachment that is right there. Uh, a little tube sticking out, and do that. So there's going to be something else attaching right there. We know that. Here's a top tip when installing this kit. You have some insulation that you have to put in. Talks about it right there in step 19. Underneath the coolant hoses that are right there and there that go to the throttle body. Make sure when you take those coolant hoses off to do your check valve right there hose that you put the, the um, insulation in at the same time and then put your, your um, coolant hoses back. Otherwise, like me, you're going to be doing it again. Okay. I got that one hose right here that ties into the T that goes here. It goes behind or ahead of the oil fill tube. Goes right here. And you can see there's a check valve right there and the insulation around it. And it goes down and hooks on to the inboard um, inboard spigot, if you will, on the uh, oil catch can. And then the other uh, spigot, the outboard spigot, uh, attaches right there. And so I've got to get some... They're real specific in this technical service bulletin about wrapping that... Uh, check valve 
in the insulation and then zip tying it on either side. So fine, I'll do that. But boy, that's a booger. All right, back with more. There you can see the two hoses attached onto the vapor box. And one going one way, one going the other. The TSB says you gotta do that. Up top here, you can see, here's the insulation that I got zip tied. That was one of the most difficult aspects of this thing. You gotta take this connector off and uh, you gotta move these hoses here, you gotta remove them and then put them back. They're cooling hoses for the um, throttle body. And don't forget to put all your little hoses back. You gotta take that connector off and reroute. There's the new, and here's the new. So, that is it. All right, let's see if this works. Okay. The glove wants to suck down inside. I'm just holding it up. I don't want the glove to go inside, so I'm just holding it. I think this technical service bulletin has done the trick. Now we've got a correct positive crankcase ventilation system. So as you can see, the, the glove test works. And so I'm pretty darn happy with this. This, is, this um, is functioning now with a slight vacuum here, which is good. And it's, it's being ported into the throttle body like it should and getting sucked down the exhaust gases then getting burned up in the engine not an easy repair it's not for the faint of heart if you are uh, feel you're mechanically challenged in any way then you probably want to have someone do this i'm pretty good mechanically so i did it myself i've done i've done far more invasive uh, repairs than this so I felt pretty good about it, but it's still, it's a bear of a repair. So for that reason, this is a repair that deserves to be remembered.